everyone, welcome again to my YouTube channel, uh, it's a girl Farida and today we'll be going through something really really important and it's all about money. Today we'll be going through the cost of studying in the UK, the cost of living in the UK, everything that has to do with money, everything that has to do with how to survive in this. We'll do this effectively, we'll be going through the cost of um, cost of applying for a visa, the cost of the health insurance, cost of tuition fees, cost of rent and maintenance, cost of transport, cost of food, miscellaneous costs that will arise while you're studying in the UK. The first cost that I'll be looking at is the cost of tuition fees. Uh, in the UK, um, depending on what uni you're studying at, the cost of tuition fees varies significantly. So like you could be going to university in the same area, in the same locality, in the same London, the same East London for example, and you're paying different fees because the universities have different rankings or they have different facilities or because of whatever reason that is particular to that university, they offer different fees um, to, their, to their international students. It is important to note that for, for home students, for students that are from the UK, from the um, European Union, the tuition fees are £9,250. However, for international students, the cost for tuition fees vary. I'm going to start with my university to make it very simple and clear. My university fees are very like all through the years. Uh, if I remember, when I when I initially applied to university, before I deferred my year, my tuition fee was £11,440 per year. And then the next year, I've noticed that the fee is actually increased significantly, not significantly, but by a few hundred pounds to uh, £11,880. And then in the following year, the fees increased to £12,100. And then currently, the fees at my, at my university are £12,700. That is, that is what I'm saying about the fees very significantly. So like in my university, for example, what it means is that uh, the fees that you pay in your first year will vary from the fees that you pay in your second year or vary from the fees you pay in your final year. And if you're doing a four-year course, the fees you pay for different years at my own university. However, with what I mentioned that fees vary from one university to another, we're going to take the example of Queen Mary University of London. In Queen Mary University of London, which is in East London, the tuition fees for international students studying law is £20,000. £850. That is a significant difference from the fees that I pay at my uni and the fees that Queen Mary University of London students pay. University, you only get a discount on your fees in your first year of university and then your many years, your second year, your third year, your fourth year or how many years you spent at university, the fees will be whatever fees are charged. There is no discount, there is no scholarship on the fees. The university that we're going to take as an example is the University of Westminster. At the University of Westminster, the fees are organised in such a way that um, whatever fee you pay um, from from one year to another is the same throughout your studies. So currently the fees at the University of Westminster is £14,000. Don't try to come back that into Naira, but just stay tuned with me. So, um, the university fee the, at the University of Westminster, the fees are fourteen thousand naira, fourteen thousand pounds, sorry, per year. So uh, that means from one year to the other, while you're uni, the fees that you pay remain the same. They fix. It doesn't change by inflection. It doesn't change by any factors whatsoever. Uh, if we take a quick, if we if we take a quick break from London and go all the way to Cambridge, outside of London, and see what the fees are and compare it to the fees that we've um, seen at my university at the University of Westminster, at Queen Mary University of London, you see that at um Cambridge University, the fees are divided into five different groups. So if you're studying law, if you're studying medicine, if you're studying whatever course you study, the fees vary depending on what course you're studying. So that means. There are, there are five different fee groups at Cambridge University. The fees for undergraduate students ranges from £22,227 to over £58,000 for undergraduates. So it depends on what course you're studying. So if you're studying in any course that falls within the five groups, which is how the fees are calculated, that means that's what your fees will be. There's no fixed, uh, there's no fixed fee for every student. The fees are dependent on what course you study, maybe because courses, different factors that are particular to different courses. While still at Cambridge, we'll compare Cambridge University fees to the fees of Anglia Ruskin University. 
at Anglo Ruskin University for fees of 13,500 pounds per year and this fees are fixed throughout the year throughout your studies so um, whatever fees you pay from your first year is the same fees that you pay in your third year looking at what I said earlier about fees varying depending on um, um, fees varying even within localities you can see the example in East London where I study comparing University of East London to Queen Mary University of London and the University of Cambridge and Anglia Ruskin University also in Cambridge so the fees vary for different universities for different universities even though they can be in the same locality depending on um, different factors Anglia Ruskin University is a very good university University of East London is a very good university but there's so many things that differentiate them uh, uh, Cambridge is a well-known university that many international students want to go to. Maybe that's why the fees are different, I don't know. But it is very clear that the fees vary depending on what location, depending on what university you attend to, you decide to attend. Uh, however, this is not the case for home students. For home students in the UK, the fees are £9,250 depending on what university they attend. Like, home students can literally go to any, any university in the UK in in London and they'll still pay the same fees. The fees are not the fees are not different unless you're doing a part time course or unless you're doing a part time course or other factors come into play, then the fees may be different. But the general fees are usually nine thousand two hundred and fifty pounds for home students. Next thing we're going to look at is the maintenance cost. Uh we're going to take a quick step back and go through applying for your visa. In order to apply for your visa you you're required to put in a maintenance uh, a certain amount of maintenance into your bank account for 28 days and if you're studying in London you are required to put in 1,255 pounds for, for 9 months into your account for 28 days and that amount, that amount is 11,385 pounds kept as maintenance in your bank account for 28 days in order for you to apply for your visa but if you're studying outside of London Say you're studying at the University of Birmingham, which is outside of London, or the University of Cambridge, which is outside of London. The maintenance, the amount of, the amount of money you require to put in as maintenance is different uh, from the amount you'd be required if you were to be studying in London University. If you're studying outside of a London University, you require to put in one thousand and fifteen pounds for nine months into your account for twenty eight days in the process of applying for your visa. That is nine nine thousand one one hundred and thirty five pounds. For nine months so that is what you require to put in as maintenance cost for nine months or uh, if you're studying for an under undergraduate course in the uk for an undergraduate course in the uk and you're um you're trying to apply for your visa and you're hoping to actually get to and you're hoping, hoping that your visa is will actually be um will actually be granted so now we're going to put that maintenance cost aside look at the cost that you actually uh, the amount of money you actually have to spend year to year, day to day, whilst you're living in the UK. We're going to look at accommodation in the UK. If you're a student in the UK, if you're a student in the UK, you can either decide to live in university accommodation or live outside of university accommodation. At my university, uh, the buildings are divided into West Halls and East Halls, West Building or East Building, however you want to call it. West Halls at my university, the fees at the 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 the, the cost of accommodation in the West Building is different from the cost of accommodation in the East Building. Also in these buildings, uh, the facilities vary. You could be living in a, um, a West, um, in a room which is a premium at my university. You could be living in a premium East Hall or a standard East Hall. You could be living in a studio flat or, or living in, in a wheelchair accessible room. So the fees vary depending on what kind of room you're actually living in. Premium East Hall at my university, the fees are six thousand six hundred and fifty pounds and twenty eight pence for the duration of um term one, term two, and term three. So that is on from September until June. The West Premium Halls at my university, the fees are five thousand seven hundred pounds and twenty four pence. And at the West Premium Halls at my university, the fees are five thousand seven hundred and twenty four pounds from September until June. Wheelchair accessible hours in my university. Fees are £6,287.49. Which is just a bit uh which is just a few hundred pounds um different from the fees in the premium East Halls, the premium West Halls, the standard East Halls, the standard West Halls, the uh, the studio rooms and the 
um, the wheelchair accessible rooms. Another example from a different university will take the London School of Economics, for example, and look at the accommodation cost at this university. London School of Economics, you, you can be expected to pay anything from £16 and £65 per week with a total of £8,473 and four pence per year at the London School of Economics. However, you may decide not to live in university accommodation. You may choose to live outside of or outside of university accommodation, you may, you may want to leave the university for one year of the university and then after the first year move out of the university or and get a place for yourself or get a place of your own. Get a place with the friends and flatmates that you've made from the university halls. If you if if you if the decision is to get a room outside of university accommodation for yourself, there's so many websites in London that you can easily get a room from like if you if you want to get a room right now you can easily get a room right now if you want to so there's spare room there's easy room made there's ideal flat made there's unite students there's so many websites that are already set up to make you like easily get accommodation in london or outside of london if you want to you should however be careful of why you're trying to find accommodation outside of university is that you should make sure that whatever accommodation you're trying to find as all bees included as all utility bills included as um make sure that you're not paying council tax because you'll be a student so you should try to get a place where you won't be like living with people that are not students and that will mean that you may have to pay council tax so just make sure that whatever place you get as wi-fi included bills included water included gas included because you don't have to pay for that separately because if it's winter and it's really really cold the prices of um gas um, can get really high because it's really cold and you're using more energy then. Remember there was a time uh, I thought maybe it would be really nice for me to save some money and I got a place uh, which was quite a distance from my uni. So I was living in zone 4 and my uni is uh, zone zone 3. So I was um, commuting from from the house I got to uni and I was paying very little for rent. I was paying £300 for my rent which is like very cheap. But then there was no Wi-Fi in this house. There was no, uh, the water was the water bill was included, gas was included, everything else was included, but the Wi-Fi wasn't included. It was a bit um, it was really kind of shit for me because like I'm I was already used to having free Wi-Fi in the house, not free well free Wi-Fi in the sense that it's already included in the rent, but in a place where Wi-Fi is not included, it's just it just makes things like kind of difficult for you because it's just boring the house if you don't have friends if you don't talk to people in the house really then you're just in your room trying to read a book or trying to sleep and that's it really so make sure that whatever place you're trying to get has wi-fi included bills included everything included and whatever you're paying as rent uh there's nothing else additional after that if you're trying to get a place from any of these websites the the, the rent will also vary um from from each website to the other, it will vary from the kind of room you want to the other, it will vary from the location of the zone to the other. So, if you try to find a zone in zone one, for example, it's a thing to find the different zones. Uh, zone one may be more expensive than, than um, living in zone three or zone four. So, you have to check what is best for you, what location is closer to the uni, what, what, commute, what commute time is best for you also. So if you expect to pay anything from two hundred and fifty pounds to a thousand pounds plus for rent, depending on what kind of accommodation you want, then you know, on if you want a single room, a double room, an ensuite room, a studio room, depending on what kind of luxury you want, because this room comes with different day rides, with different standards of things to check that, check your pocket, how much do I have, can I pay for this, can I pay for that, uh, uh, what other costs do I have? Yeah, in mind, so you need to check that very well. And as a student, every student wants to try to save some money. You need to make sure, make sure to check everything very well and make sure that you've got a good contract. Also, don't get a room where um, don't get a room where um, don't get a room where you don't get a tenancy agreement because that can be that that may be in that that may not be good for you in the future. Just make sure that whatever room you get, you get your own tenancy agreement signed and sealed by, by the landlord just in case anything happens and you, you need to move out or you need to get your deposit back make sure your deposit when you do pay it is also protected so that when you move out you can easily get your money back make sure that when you move into the house make sure you get pictures so that um 
whatever happens when you're about to bath, the wire will come off. Oh, the last foot is off. The board is not working or whatever, so you need to check that, check that everything is in place when you move in, so that when you're about to move out, you will easily get your money back. In this way, there are nine different board zones. So you have zone one to zone nine. Things to check very well, like I said. Uh, if you be living in, if you're using zone one, it will be ideal for you to get a room either in zone one or zone two or zone three. But then if you go all the way to zone four or zone five, that means you pay way more for rent. If you think, oh, I'm living in zone 5 and I'm paying so little to rent and um, then I'm commuting to uni and I'm saving money but in the real sense, you're not saving money because you're paying more towards transport and less towards rent which all means that you're paying more money eventually uh, For example, uh, my uni is in zone 3 and I got it out in zone 3 so that means, like, I, I literally, zone 10 class, I just need to, like walk to my uni without having to get on the bus or on the train. This will lead me to talking about the cost of transport in the UK. Like everything in the UK costs money literally. Nothing comes for free in this country. You need to pay for everything because the style of transport is so good and it needs to be maintained. Probably that's why it's expensive, probably not, but everything this uh, I'm just gonna discuss the cost. Um in the UK because there are different zones you could if you could get a bus ticket or or a bus pass or a train ticket, you get a monthly bus pass, a weekly bus pass, you get uh, um, a monthly train ticket or a weekly train ticket. And for students, if you're a student in the UK, it's very important to know that if you're in the UK, you can get a student Oyster card, which will ideally cost about 20 to 25 pounds. And um, which, which or if you need to get a real card, because on the real card, you also get. Um, discounts for real travel. I've been doing peak times on off peak time. The prices will also vary. So you need to also put that into account whenever you're trying to get a ticket or if you're trying to go pay as you go, whichever one works best for you. I think many people around London and outside of London tend to do is to ride their bicycles to work or to to uni or to wherever they need to go because with a bicycle you don't need to pay for trans um. <coughs> With a bicycle, you don't need to pay for transport. It saves you some money on transport. Okay, another thing that you will likely you spend money on, not even likely, another thing that you would definitely spend money on is food. Food, everyone needs food to survive. Everybody needs food to be able to sustain body and mind, to be able to go to uni, to be able to go to work, to be able to do everything that they need to do to survive in this world, basically. So you need to budget on how much you're also spending food. For me, for example, I spend about twenty pounds a week on food. So it will it depends depends on it depends on you. Depends on if you like to eat out, like to buy coffee every day, like to go out with friends to the pub to drink. All 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 things are things that you need to consider when you things I would consider. Uh, I would say it's best if you actually go shopping, buy your own food, cook at home rather than go outside um, to always eat out because if you eat out every single day, you're spending about £10 every single day to eat or even more, say about £15 every day to eat when you could spend £20 a week to eat if you cook at home. So I, I would say it's best if you want to be able to save some money to, to go shopping, do your, do your cooking at home, prepare your lunch, pack it to uni if you can. And, and that way you are able to save more money you need to survive to other things. Someone that drinks a lot of coffee, it will be best if you get your own coffee machine that allows that allows you to be able to make your own coffee at home. So I'm going to Starbucks every single day to buy coffee. Lastly, if you're watching from a different country, if you've not, um, yeah, you need to you need to do the conversion. You need to know how much you'll be spending once you arrive here. So like it's a lot of money to actually survive in this country. It's 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 a lot of money, which which if you convert it into your local currency, say you're watching from Nigeria, you're watching from the United Kingdom, you're watching from Italy, France, whatever country you're watching from. You're watching from Tunisia, if you're watching from a different African country from Ghana, you're trying to convert this amount into Ghana CDs or Nigerian Naira, it will be a very shocking amount to you because that is a lot of money really. But around here yeah, it's not it's a lot of money but it's 
it's how it is around here basically like this is things are different around here and just don't just i hope you've learned a lot from this video i hope it helps you if you come into the uk to study i hope it's um i hope it helps you in your budgeting if you if you're um already in the uk and trying to save some money i hope i've been very um i hope this video has been very informative for you i hope it's been really helpful that is the aim of this video and thank you for watching and if you've not subscribed to my channel make sure to subscribe make sure to like make sure to share and make sure to stay tuned for more videos and if you've not watched my previous videos make sure to watch them thank you very much and see you next time bye